Now, for people that aren't getting prescribed TRT but want the increase in testosterone, there are these plant compounds like Tonga Ali and another one which is very interesting. It's a Nigerian shrub called T Fidogia agrestis. Uh, not so fast. Hey guys, Fitness Science, and today I'm going to be speaking about Fidogia agrestis. This plant was brought up in a recent podcast of Joe Rogan's, and I wanted to discuss why it's not a good idea for you to take this. It's a shrub common to Africa, like South Africa. It is not a good idea for you to take this for a study that was done on it in terms of testicular toxicity, which I'm going to get into now. Now, apparently this shrub can boost testosterone, libido, stamina, and boost muscle, and there are a number of supplements out there that purport that it can do all these wonderful things in terms of boosting testosterone and even the guest on Joe Rogan's podcast at the time Andrew Huberman mentions that it mimics a luteinizing hormone but that's actually false it doesn't exactly mimic it what it does it can increase the level of luteinizing hormone and that's the way that it increases testosterone and it does actually increase testosterone they gave rats for dosia agrestis uh, in 18 milligrams per kilogram of body weight doses 50 and 100 and it does raise testosterone the testosterone level is pretty much increased in a linear fashion uh, with the dose with the highest dose having a very big at the end there number j a very big increase in testosterone levels but the exact same doses were studied in another study and it found some very interesting things. So they gave the rats the exact same doses of 18, 50, and 100. And in all groups of rats, their testes increased in size, but also their cholesterol increased. And the researchers actually hypothesized that a mechanism for the increase in testosterone when taking Fidogia agrestis is potentially the fact that cholesterol um, increases in the testes themselves. And we know that cholesterol is involved in the pathway of steroidogenesis. Testosterone is essentially made out of cholesterol. So having more of the precursor of cholesterol there may lead to an increase in testosterone. That was one mechanism that the researchers found. But the most interesting part was that they did find testicular damage associated with high doses of Fidogia agrestis. Number one, the functional ability of the sperm cells in the testes to utilize carbohydrates as energy was reduced and the Sertoli cells that produce sperm had reduced functioning. An enzyme called GDH, which is short for glutamate dehydrogenase, this enzyme gives sperm cells energy in the form of carbohydrates or lipid metabolism and essentially Essentially, what the researchers found was that this enzyme was severely reduced when the rats were given Fidogia agrestis. What this means, basically, and what they found was that the sperm cells essentially had uh, a reduced functioning because of a lack of energy that they were being provided. The seminiferous tubules are where sperm is primarily produced in the testes. If we look at these photos, what happened was that you can see that in the first photo, this one is the rats that were just given um, water. So this was the control group. And this is what the seminiferous tubules where the sperm is produced is supposed to look like in the rats, where everything has clean borders and everything looks, um, you know, compact and clean. Whereas if we look at what happened in figure two, so this one is the 18 milligrams of Fidogia agrestis per kilogram of the rat's body weight per day for 28 days. You can see a real breakdown in the seminiferous tubules and there's starting to be some distortion of them. It gets even worse in the 50 milligram per kilogram per body weight per day photo where the seminiferous tubules are starting to be really uncoordinated and you can't really see the boundaries very clearly. It just is starting to look very marbled and um, quite hard to differentiate any sort of cutoffs between them. And then what happens if you were to look at the highest dose in the study, which was proven to increase testosterone, but in this study, you can see there is severe disintegration in the actual seminiferous tubules themselves and the sperm cells or the germ cells, which eventually will turn into sperm cells, mature sperm cells. Um, you can see here that there's it's really uncoordinated completely and you can see big disintegration of the seminiferous tubules um, and you can actually see detachment of where the germ cells are supposed to attach to the seminiferous epithelium. You can see they're detaching and it's very marbly uh, and you can see these big white spots where there's not supposed to be. Now, this is essentially testicular toxicity in play here. This is what happens when the testes are not only damaged, but where they're not either getting enough energy and the sperm production itself is being hampered as a result of well, the only thing the rats were given in this study was Fidogia agrestis. So we have to conclude that a high dose of Fidogia agrestis can damage the testes themselves and may be actually toxic to the testes and sperm production. If we look at the rat's sperm production, 
This makes sense when we look at what's actually happened here. Their sperm counts over the 28 days in the highest um, dose group of 100 milligrams per kilogram per body weight per day for 28 days, the sperm counts was the lowest in this group. It went from 80.7 times 10 to the 8, uh, plus or minus 8.21, all the way down to 63.9 to 10 to the 8. That is a huge decrease in the sperm count. If we also look at the motility, that was down, the morphology was down, and the density of sperm had a big significant decrease from 65 all the way down to 44. This is really indicative of decreased sperm capacity as well as testicular damage. Now, this wasn't permanent. The rats did regain some of their function after 10 days of stopping for Dogeo Agrestis. However, what we can conclude is that it's probably not a good idea to take this supplement because of the potential toxicity in the testes themselves and in terms of sperm production. You know, if the results of this study are applicable in any way to humans, you probably don't want to risk any testicular damage. So I've done a video on a legitimate testosterone booster, which is proven by science, which is Tonkat Ali. And to give credit, it was actually mentioned in the Joe Rogan podcast. However, I thought I'd do a video on this one, which was also mentioned, just because I would stay clear of this. You don't want to damage your testes, especially in terms of fertility later on. Um, yeah, so be very careful. This is why you should research into anything that you're potentially going to take in terms of supplementation or anything you might take that you see in the fitness industry. The goal of this channel is mainly to provide high quality information to keep you healthy and safe as you go through your fitness goals. And this was a key opportunity to keep you guys healthy and safe, especially in terms of fertility, testicular damage, and just general um, testosterone boosters that may actually harm you in the long run. Had to get this information out there. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos like these, please consider subscribing to my channel where I go through all the high quality literature and science behind the fitness industry and talk to you guys about how to dissect and discern literature studies to help you reach your goals uh, more effectively. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Fitness Science signing out.